Hey guys, it's Flip, and today we're going to show you how to change the brake pads on a Chevy Colorado or a GMC Canyon. Alright, this is my 2005 Chevy Colorado, and first of all, thanks to my father-in-law for helping me out with this video and showing me how to do this stuff through the years. So to start off, how do you know when you need new brakes? Well, this right here is the warning tab, and as you can see, this pad is really thin and that tab's going to start to scratch on this rotor right here and that's going to give you the famous squeal that you hear when it's time to change your brakes. You can see on my tabs here where it's a little shiny on the corner where it was starting to rub on the rotor. It was definitely time to change them. So the first thing you want to do is jack the truck up. You want to put your jack on the frame so it can support the weight. Then you want to use a couple jack stands. Never trust a hydraulic jack to hold up the truck while you're working on it. You should also put your emergency brake on and chalk the back wheels just for safety. Alright, this is the front right wheel and once you get your tire off, first thing you need to do is take off your caliper. So you're going to uh, use your socket wrench and you need a 13 16 socket and you're going to take off these two bolts, one on the top, one on the bottom that hold the caliper onto the bracket. Then take your caliper off and hang it under the car with a coat hanger or a piece of wire or a bungee cord. Um, we set it on the rotor here so I can show you what it looks like. These pistons slowly work their way out as your brake pad wears thin so they can keep making contact. So the first thing we're going to need to do is push these pistons back in so we have room for the thicker brake pad. We're going to do this with a board and a C-clamp. Right here you can see what the old brake pad looks like, how thin it is, and here's the new brake pad. You can see how much thicker it is. So we have to make room for that to fit. Um, we're using a board and a C-clamp, but there's a number of different ways you can do this. Some people will use one of the old brake pads and a C-clamp. Um, you can put a C-clamp right on each individual piston or they even make a special uh, brake tool that you can use to crank these pistons back in. Any way you do it is fine as long as you get these pistons back in flush so that you have room to fit in your new thicker brake pads. Now the catch is as you push these pistons back in it is going to force brake fluid back up into the system so you have to get this out somehow. There is a bleeder screw on the back of the caliper that you can take out and drain some brake fluid this way. Uh, we chose to just back it up into the reservoir and then take out the excess above the fill line with a plastic syringe. Uh, this way is nice and neat. Um, it's not quite as messy as draining the brake fluid with the bleeder screw. We just siphoned it right off the top. Taking the old pads out is pretty simple. Just grab it and use a screwdriver to get behind it and just pop it out. Then you're going to do the same thing with the brake pad on the back. Alright, sorry if this is confusing, but we are going to now switch from the front right wheel to the front left wheel, but the same stage in the process. These clips on the bracket and the clips on the face of the brake pad are anti-rattle clips. To put the new brake pads in, just slide it into the bracket and press it in snug. Then you want to do the same thing with the brake pad on the back. Just slide it in where it fits and squeeze it to the rotor snug. I'm going to pause it for a quick side note. It's best to not let the caliper hang by the brake hose like we did here. You should always tie it up with a piece of wire or a coat hanger. That was an oops. Then you're going to put your caliper back on and put the caliper guide pins back in the top and the bottom. It's a good idea to grease these pins up with some brake and caliper grease before you put them back in. This set requires a crescent wrench and a socket wrench at the same time to put in the caliper guide pin. So first put in the top bolt. Then 
then screw in the bottom bolt. Then you want to get in the truck and pump the brakes a few times. This is going to force the pistons out to meet the pads. You'll feel a lot of play at first and then it should snug up. After pumping your brakes, check your fluid and make sure it's at the right line. Uh, it's possible that you might need to add a little bit or take a little bit more out. Then use your jack to lower the truck down to the ground. Just enough where the tires are touching and there's enough weight so the tires don't rotate. You don't want to put the truck all the way down until you have the lug nuts back on and tight. Get your lug nuts back on and then use a torque wrench to tighten them down all the way. This will prevent you from having your lug nuts too loose or too tight. The proper torque for this truck is a hundred pound feet of torque. When you have the lug nut tightened to the proper torque, the torque wrench will click like this. Once you have all the lug nuts tightened down, you can go ahead and lower the truck the rest of the way down and put the full weight of the vehicle on the tires. The last thing is, it's also a good idea when you do this brake pad change to take your rotors into a shop and have the machine turned. This will make sure they're true and smooth. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching.